Aerospace T Fittings. Today I'm going to explain to you how you can actually create a company off of producing this part. It's about to get crazy. It's about to go down. It's about to go down. Oh, what's up everybody? This is Titan. Check it out. It is a uh, aerospace orbital T fitting. You got elbows, you got different types of shapes, and uh, it's a normal part that we see throughout many industries, right? You can order them from the catalogs made out of 316 stainless, and especially in aerospace. I've machined a million of these things, and I mean it, a million of these things. You know, parts that can't just be ordered online, right? These are specialty parts. They're out of specialty materials, and they have to be designed specifically to the engineer specs, all right? So let's talk about it a little bit. All right, so therein lies the problem, right? Engineers design their assemblies, their rockets, their engines, and basically call out the exact tube fittings or T fittings based on their specifications, based on their heat, their material, all of it, all right? And we're gonna talk about it, and I'm gonna talk about a need in our industry for this part. Before I get started, I just wanna invite you as always, if you love what we're doing by bringing forth that education, please subscribe to our channel. If you love this video, hit the like button. If you got ideas on future videos, put them in the comments, you might see it in a future vlog. All right, so check this out. This is a part that I've been actually making for years for all different types of companies, okay? So it's an aerospace part, but I can show it because they all make the exact same part, all right? Usually, when I get a print for this guy right here, I'll actually have a million line items and they'll be calling out different tube sizes, okay? So part A might have a three-quarter diameter up here but then it has a quarter and then a three-eighths over here based on the assembly. Part B could be a quarter-inch tube, quarter-inch tube, quarter-inch tube. Part C could be a three-eighths, quarter-inch, and three-quarter, right? So depending on the assembly, they keep changing. Now, why can't these high-end engineers actually just order these online since there's a million of them? Because the majority of them out there are actually made out of like 316 stainless, copper maybe. They're made from different materials, but where the money is, is in making them out of titanium. A286, Inconel, right? Hard nickel alloys based on applications, based on sizes, based on tight, tight tolerances, right? And this is the real world. A part like this, I'm not gonna name companies, but a part like this out of Inconel would often go for $500, $600, $700 just for a simple part like this. Because the tolerances, the, the ID to the OD to the relationship, all of it has to be absolutely perfect. And, one of the problems in the aerospace industry is that they never get ahead. So you always have these engineers and they actually order the parts five at a time, 10 at a time, 15 at a time. And if you have to set up for an Inconel job like this and go through the entire inspection process, there's a lot of time in that setup, right? But the engineers and the buyers need their parts. They need it now and they're willing to pay the money. All right, so my company, Titans of CNC, we keep getting quotes for these parts made out of hard metals and we turn them all away. If I wasn't going into education, if I wasn't going into teaching all of you how to actually manufacture and how to compete in this trade, I do have some ideas about how to actually go about making this part, okay? And I'm gonna share those with you right now. See, T fittings, and in orbital fittings and elbow fittings, they're all huge in this industry. 
Let me just say real quickly, that's one of the reasons that we have a teaching series on Titans of CNC Academy that you guys can check out for free. So check this out. It is not a T fitting, but you can see it has the same tube and then it has a port. All right. So we wanted to create a series for aerospace. There was kind of like, you know, it was complicated, but not too complicated. And I was like, you know what? We make a million fittings. Let's go do a whole series on fittings and call them aerospace connections. All right. So you can see that in the education drop down and you can see a bunch of parts just like this where we actually change it up a little bit. We show you all the dimensions on the tubes. Well, when it comes to the ports, you actually find out all the numbers and inspection numbers by going into the actual AS spec, meaning a document that has each port called out and shows you the port, shows you the thread, and shows you the exact tolerances, all right? So now with this series, you're working like real machinists who are actually making parts for real aerospace companies because a lot of times, this is exactly how it's called out. All right, so enough on the plug and the academy and the things that we're doing to teach you guys and take you to greatness. Let's talk about this part right here, right? Look, this one has chamfers, this one doesn't. They're a little bit different, different wall thicknesses. It all matters and that's why there's a huge need for these custom tees. So my thought for a young, aggressive company that wants to step into aerospace and they, they're not maybe AS9100 yet, right? But you're, you're complying. You got your inspection techniques down. You got some talent with machining, but you just haven't been able to get on that level. This is actually a part that can get you in that door. All right. But you got to figure out how to solve the right problems. And those problems, it's a high cost part. How do we do that? We do it by volume, okay? So when they order five parts, you actually give them a volume price of 300 parts, okay? How would you do that, Titan? If they're only ordering five, how would you give them a price of 300? Meaning, how would you give them a part for maybe $85 that would have cost $750 or even close to $1,000. Simple. You do it with dedicated fixturing and dedicated tooling and a dedicated machine. Meaning, you take a machine, you put the right work holding, something creative that allows you to actually index and do all the tubes at the same time or even a fourth axis that allows you to the same index and do all the tubes at the same time running multiple parts. And you actually standardize all your tools. So you basically have from tool one to tool 40, different size end mills, different size face mills, different size, you know, go drills. And here's a little tip. A lot of people struggle with these T fittings because they drill it and they end mill it, right? End mills have taper and drills walk, especially in hard materials. So what I do and my team does is we actually drill it and mill it or rough it. And then we come back and we actually bore it using a can of metal bore head and then we bore it on the outside so that the ID and the OD is within tense and it's absolutely perfect and it's repeatable. Then we have gauge pins to the tenth that we stick in to double check and we put the parts on the CMM so that we make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. Every single part is inspected. Every single tolerance is inspected 100%, but we actually have programs on the CMM to actually knock these guys out, all right? So getting back to the trick of it, right? Standardized tooling, your end mills, your drills, each one is picked specifically for making these parts, okay? So in your tool library, you might have a tool that is specific for 316. 
right? You might have a tool that's specific for ink and oil. That's why I go with the Go Drill from Kenna Metal because it does all of them, right? And then I have different sizes. And on some of the oddball shapes, I actually use end mills to actually open them up so I can quickly make adjustments. And then we just set the bore bars, boom, and we finish everything, kiss it, make it beautiful, boom, boom, boom. Now the whole point with dedicating a machine, dedicating all the tooling, is basically you're taking a chance, you're stepping up, and you're trusting in your ability to actually make these parts efficiently and have material on hand to actually run nonstop and take the setup out of it, take all the brain work out of it. So then you can actually go to your customer and charge them for the runtime alone. So figure out how to take the process of machining streamline it, take all the setup out, take all the brain work out, machine it efficiently, do all the different types of materials, be able to change on a dime as far as adjusting sizes, have your inspection perfect and have samples of all the different types of fittings out there and in different materials from stainless to titanium to ink and L, A286, all of it. And then this little part, will give you confidence to actually walk into all of these new aerospace companies that are rising up right now from Texas to California to Washington, across the world, all these companies are rising up and they all need a bunch of these guys right here. So there you have it. You can actually build a company off of this. You build the relationships, you do more and more parts, and then by having that relationship with those aerospace companies and solving their problems, they give you more parts and you're able to solve more problems and you get more machines and that's how you build a company off of this simple part, all right? Earlier I mentioned AS9100. The reason is because small companies can't afford it. But if you sell this part to the right people and they allow you in the door and you start producing the part, then all of a sudden you'll start making money and you can put the money into getting your AS9100, which will lift your company into the elite status and allow you to get even more work, all right? So one thing I wanna mention is that this is serious business. Now we're talking about aerospace machining. Everything has to be perfect. You have to have all of the talent. You gotta have all the inspection. You have to have everything absolutely dialed to perform on that level. And I just wanna stress the point. This industry is not easy, but for the few that are amazing, that can truly satisfy the customer's needs, the door is open to the dream, right? There's a lot of people failing out there. So if you have the key to unlock that secret and figure out how to make parts efficiently, you can have an incredible career. And right now, aerospace is going from 800 billion to 2 trillion, 3 trillion. We know how to make rockets. Like there is so much opportunity coming our way right now so figure out a problem maybe it's not this one maybe it's another one figure out how to solve those problems go solve them for the right people sell yourself sell your talent sell your skills take care of that customer because if you don't somebody else will and you can have an amazing future in this trade all right but it takes hard work dedication perseverance all of it and there you have it a little bit of personal and sincere advice from someone who's been in this trade for a long time, who's been able to work with the top aerospace companies, and I know what they want and what they need. And if you're never gonna go into aerospace, hopefully you learned something from this video. Solve the right problems and you can make money.